Now I've just finished putting a little clear gel and white along just about the top half of the canvas. I'm gonna take some blue and mix that with my white. This blue is just, it's too dark. I don't have that much clear gel to, to lighten it up, you know? All right, that looks about right. Just very, well, maybe a little, little red just to warm it up some so it's not quite so, I don't want purple, but not quite so blue. Okay, that was easily the hardest part of this whole sky. The rest of the sky is very simple. The rest of the sky is just brush strokes like this, overlapping brush strokes. I'm not going to do any clouds because we're painting a desert. I haven't done a desert in a long time. Um, they're not usually the most popular things um, for people to watch, but it's been so long since I've done one that I thought I would go ahead and just do one. Uh, it's fun for me, variety, you know, got to have variety. All right, <laughs> let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did on my last one. And if you would like to do your version of this one and share it with me, you can use the information there on the screen. And if I see it in time, I'll get it in the next video. So as you can see, I've done a basic sketch. Now I'm gonna get just a soft kind of a purple gray color. This will be the underpainting color for our mountain up here. I like that kind of a kind of a crack, kind of a point there, there, kind of a nice another a point there. That's just interesting, you know. Then it comes down, see how I'm kind of changing things on the fly. Just get my shadow side in, then I'll get my highlight side in with a different color. In fact, I'd like to darken my shadows just a little. And of course, we, we're going to definitely be wiping this away with a shop towel before we, before we finish up with highlights. In fact, I've got a plan. I probably shouldn't mention that plan until I go to do it. I'm not going to mention it. How's that? I've got a plan. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm probably going to change my mind, but I'll let you know if I don't change my mind. How's that? There we go. Just kind of finishing up rubbing off some of this paint. There's more than we need up here, you know, and our highlight's not going to stick. But you see, I just did the same exact idea uh, for the shadow side as the highlight side. So it almost looks like a mountain, you know, if you kind of squint your eyes, it's not detailed. It's not sharp, it's very soft, but it kind of looks like a mountain. All right, remember I said, I, I don't know if I'm gonna change my mind or not. I did not change my mind. We're gonna be using the palette knife. <laughs> oh, here we go. Have you ever seen my videos from 10 years ago? You go back and look at them. We did a lot more palette knife painting. Um, whew, here we go. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Why am I doing it with a palette knife? I'm so thrown off because I'm using a palette knife to highlight a mountain that I can't, I'm struggling to think of what I'm trying to say. Mountains that are that are desert are very, very easy with a palette knife. That's why I'm doing this. They're they're nice. They just are nice. Um, I think you just get a lot of those rock cracks and textures with really no effort compared to with a brush, which is this would be tremendous effort. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, the knife almost looks better still, even if you do it the brush way and you spend two hours just on your mountain and so on, which is fine. I've done that before too, but you know what? We're doing it with a palette knife. Hopefully somebody will get a kick out of this. <laughs> Enjoy seeing the throwback palette knife mountain. It's not a bad technique, but you do have to be careful not to get too much paint that will throw off your illusion of distance. So when I do this, you see, I don't, I'm not working that much paint in. I'm keeping it fairly flat. That is fairly, you know, you can't, you, you can't see too much of that texture. That mountain peaks more in, more in the shadow, just a, just a little highlight. We'll be finessing this back and forth, back and forth quite a while. Might as well spend some time and get it dialed in. I'm just continuing to build up highlight and shadow, mostly highlight, and the, the shadow can be a different step, really. You know, you kind of have to imagine, you know, okay, here's a peak here, and, and somewhere in here it's going to kind of cast a pretty hard shadow, I would think. The sun, you know, depending on how high or low that sun is in the painting. So just kind of something to be aware of. Get a little more highlight here, I'm just using the small edge of the knife there to get these little, these little details. Each time I get another scoop of paint, I, I do something with it. I change it just a little, you know, and then just continue with the highlight. A little more red even. I like the idea of having some more reds maybe in this one. So just add a little red to that. Let's see, yeah, nice. And you know what, this will be great because this rock will be nice and dark, so this will be a good contrast. So make sure this mountain's plenty bright here. All right, that's pretty much it. Just a few final touches. You know, this isn't, 
isn't that big of a deal. We can always go back and work with this mountain more if we need to, but you'll notice I have no mist here at the bottom. I think that's important um, because you're not gonna get mist in the desert because it just doesn't really happen. <laughs> not like that, not usually. So I don't wanna see like a lot of mist. And now you'll see some atmosphere. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking like floaty rolling clouds at the bottom. Now you're not gonna see that. Now as we come, let me get a different brush out. As we come down here, I want it to get lighter. So rather than painting it all dark and then trying to highlight it, I'm actually just gonna brighten it up. Just right here. And it needs a little more, a little more red. Just a little more red, yellow ochre. There it is. Cool. This is just our, just our color here to work with. We can erase any of this with a shop towel that we need to, um, you know. That's pretty, pretty good right there. It looks pretty good. Take some brown, just umber. All right. And we're gonna have uh, lots of both cactus and just shrubs up in here. That goes up, actually goes up quite a bit. All right, I've wiped away the sand area so that we can actually uh, do some painting over it without mixing mud. That's very good. Now, this section up here, Let's go ahead and uh, let's give a little bit of color to it. Just whatever right here is fine. I, I don't know, it doesn't need to be overly, I don't want any white streaks in there because that would look like snow, but you know, there's some sort of color. All right, now right over here on that, I'll just place on a little, I just want like the outline of that rock. Yeah, just not much, really not much. Maybe just a little more here, there, that's good. And then on the shadow side, we'll, we'll need some sort of a shadow color. This is not a palette knife painting, I'm just doing my rocks with the palette knife. So now I've got kind of a muddy green color and that's, I would say, pretty appropriate for uh, a bush. I'm gonna start with my bushes and I'll do, and I'll do the cactus later. Yeah, bushes first is I think probably the best thing. I like the idea of, uh, I'm even enjoying that kind of brush that's got a little mud in it, see that? Got different colors happening there just automatically. There's some red, why not? This is a, a desert, it, it's very, very colorful. Deserts are more colorful than you think. There we go. Okay, that's pretty. In fact, a desert would have more color, many, many more colors than, oh, than some sort of a, like a forest, you know? A lot more colors than a forest. There. And I know, because I've lived, <laughs> I've lived both places, so I can say that somebody's, somebody's talking at the screen right now. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. I've lived both places. I've lived in the desert, and I've lived in the forest with a bunch of trees. The desert has more color. What I need to do here is I need to stop and grab a shop towel. This is just the same one I was using from before. And I need to remove now this paint rather than scrubbing because that'll totally do away with the texture. I just want to blot it. Now I'm going to sculpt in a couple of these little desert bushes, just the detail brush and, and a series of strokes kind of pulling inward gives a nice look. Of course, our highlight obviously coming <laughs> this way. A little texture is, is very desirable, a little more texture maybe than normal, a little gloppier than normal um, is desirable because it'll counteract the gloppiness of the mountain. Uh, in fact, I would say it's probably critical <laughs> to do a little gloppiness to make it consistent. It would be weird to have the mountain thick in texture and this bush thin like you did it with a liner brush, you know what I mean? The cactus is gonna be the main star of the show here, at least to me, I think it is. So. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of going, going around getting a little bit of this color up in here to smush it in. So now I've got some green and some red kind of mixed together, but not over mixed, kind of both happening at once, but not, uh, not together, you know what I mean? Okay, somewhere, where do you want it? This is a great way to hold your brush up, figure out where do you want it. Well, I don't want it there. That blocks my highlight. I want it right about there. It won't block my highlight so much. I'm gonna bring down well, what is it? This is a saguaro cactus. If you're not familiar with these, Google them. They're really, really old. When they get to be this big, they're extremely old. They're really, really heavy. And that's about all the facts that I know about these. <laughs> uh, 
in fact, I believe they've got to be incredibly old just to even grow these little arms. I think just that alone tells you that they're old, if I'm remembering correctly. This isn't evening time, but it's getting to be evening time. You know, you can just kind of tell. All right, now, where else do we want these, you know? We'll just continue to sprinkle. I don't want a ton. Ooh, that is very, very red. That's too red. <laughs> Let's not do that. Red and red and green make brown. So you put some brown over brown, put some brown over it, and all of a sudden you're be all right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight, kind of a glow to the outside of each one of these here. And I do the glow on the outside first, and then I'll, I'll do the inside second. I'm kind of bouncing my brush. It simulates the texture of these, of these saguaro cactus, because they do have the, uh, they do have the ribs that go straight up and down. I just want these to be very much sparkly. Just on the, on the outside edge. These here will be just a little bit more detailed. So make sure that we do that. Well, now I'm gonna paint in very dark, almost black, not totally black. I actually squirted out some extra paint, some red, some black. I don't want these just dead in color. You know, I wanna have a lot of color in them. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna scrape all of this paint off and then wipe it with a paper towel before we continue. So I'm okay painting it on thick. By doing it thick, um, it, it'll happen quickly. And there you go. I do like having that red in there. I think that's really neat. I think that works well. Uh, the most critical part here is that I have sharp edges. And again, just like all the other mountains of rocks, we're gonna be painting and detailing these rocks with a palette knife. We're gonna keep them very dark. A lot of purples and the shadows and so on. So just to keep that in mind. Back to the palette knife, I'm gonna add just a little, little something to these rocks. Again, not a whole lot. I don't want much. That will totally ruin this effect that we're trying to achieve here. Well, now I say not a lot. I'm going to have a lot. I'm just not going to have a lot of bright colors. I'm going to have a lot of subtle colors here in the shadows because I won't just leave it dark. I won't leave it blank. Put a lot of color in it. That color just doesn't happen to be the, the highlight, you know. Now, there we go. Each rock kind of intertwined in the next, you know, you don't want to have them just like floating on top of each other. You want them to, to feel sort of connected. Yeah, you know, something like that. That's fine. You can always add an extra highlight, but I may need to mix up a little more paint. Just grab some gray, kind of purpley gray. You can always brighten it up, but start right about there. I did not wipe these rocks off because I'm using a palette knife. It's not necessary to wipe them off like that. Um, I know we did wipe the mountain off and I think that was good, but I mean, I can stop and wipe these off if I need to. It's not necessary. Not given what we're trying to do. So I will just lay on some of this. And I'm not going to do just like one stroke and leave it because I do want like separate rocks like there's another it kind of comes this way so sometimes I'll scrape the paint off you know and then muddle it you can't just lay it where you can but I'm choosing not to just lay it down and leave it I want to I want to see something a little something more with it yeah see that that works let me step back yeah so we're just going to do a lot of that just a lot of that scraping up we're using at this point just a lot of mud because I got a lot of mud on my palette and that mud is sufficient here for what we want to get done well, that wraps up our desert painting for today. I enjoyed doing something just a little bit different and hopefully you enjoyed seeing it too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.